Hey everybody, welcome to Money's No Object. I'm your host, Dylan Howell. Uh, this is episode number 10 and the end of the second week of our new YouTube channel and podcast. I'm just so excited to, to get with you guys today about this, this fun, well, I don't know if it's so much fun, but it's exciting, this exciting topic that, that we're going to hit on today, and that is uh, the fourth step in our financial action plan that we've been laying out uh, throughout the, the course of this week and that we're going to continue into next week. And this fourth step is paying off all consumer debt. That's why I say I don't know if it's it's fun, but it's exciting. It's a it's a big deal. So uh, that's what we're going to cover today, and we're going to kind of kind of walk through that step by step together. Before we really get started, as a new channel uh, on YouTube and as a new podcast, we thrive on subscribes. So uh, if if you would like to subscribe to our our YouTube channel, just just go down below, click that red subscribe button. Uh, like this video, that would help me out a lot, and uh, leave me some comments uh, so that we can kind of build a community around uh, this idea of financial literacy and uh, learning about personal finances. And uh, I'd you know like to to hear anything you have to say and, and respond to to anything accordingly. You can also check out the podcast on uh, iTunes and Spotify and subscribe there. Um, you can. Follow me on social media at M N O with Dylan, and you can also check out our website to to see the financial coaching services that we offer, uh, www.mnowithdylan.com, and you can go there and and browse around and and see what we offer and see what we're about and and all of those different things. So let's just recap really quick. Where are we at in our financial action plan? So what have we done? Well, step one, we created our budget, right? And so our budget is our income and our expenses, right? We, we laid all those things out on at least a monthly basis. And we made it a zero-based budget, meaning none of your income goes uh, without being accounted for. And we, we have already set that out and creating a, a, a spending plan for ourselves with that budget. Then what did we do? So then we went to step two, which was one month of expenses saved into an initial emergency fund. So this wasn't all of the emergency fund that we're going to that we're going to build up, but this is an initial emergency fund of one month of expenses that's in cash in some high yield savings or money market account and it's sitting there just for emergencies. And then yesterday we talked about uh financial action plan step 3, which is investing up to the match, that is if you have an employer retirement account that offers a, a match, then then you should put in the money to invest up to that amount. No more, no less, just up to the match. And uh, that that's the only investing we want to do at this point because you can get those 100% returns. We're not really worried about the things that we're investing in just yet, but we're, we're going to talk about those things moving forward. But then we get to today, and today is is just, it is a, it's a milestone in somebody's financial life. And it that milestone is paying off all your consumer debt. Some people never do. A lot of people never do. A lot of people never get around to paying off all of their consumer debt. But I want every one of you to do so. And that's why I've got it at step four in the financial action plan. This is a grueling step. It can be a lot of fun. It can be really exciting and really motivating, but it is a tough step. And this separates the the women from the girls and the the men from the boys this this separates uh, those who can and those who cannot and those who are willing to try and change and those who are not and so um, let's just let's dive right into this so what do i mean by consumer debts so basically everything but a mortgage at this point so this is going to include car loans student loans medical bills uh, home equity lines of credit, payday loans, personal loans, medical bills, all these different types of debt, uh, credit cards, right? So, so all of these different things. And before we really dig too far into why we're needing to pay all these off, I want to just hit you guys with, with some stats. And, and maybe this will really open your eyes to how bad these problems are in America today. So let me, let me hit you with these numbers and, and see how this, this impacts the way that you're viewing your debt. So all of these are 2019 numbers, 
and and I'll just go right down the line. And and these are just aggregate amounts uh, of debt in the U.S. for the most part. So, like car loans in 2019, 1.3 trillion dollars in car loans outstanding. That's <laughs> that's a ton of money. Uh, student loans at the end of 2019, 1.4 trillion, and it is even more now. It's eclipsed 1. 5 trillion now. Medical bills. Well, I, I couldn't get an aggregate number on medical bills, but the average hospital stay cost is $5,220. And those are happening all the time and people are not being able to pay for them. So those average bills are just piling up on people as well. Credit cards, credit cards, $829 billion in credit card debt outstanding. And that's some high interest debt that I don't think any of us want to be dealing with payday loans. Again, I couldn't get an aggregate number here, but the average annualized interest rate on a payday loan is 391%. So that's just outrageous. Um, then you've got HELOCs, home equity lines of credit, like second mortgages, $420 billion in outstanding HELOCs. Then you've got personal loans, $305 billion in personal loans. And another potential uh, consumer debt that you could fall into that you really can't get a number for anywhere is having tax debt, having IRS debt. And so that, that's a, that's a big one. And, and we're going to talk about that one as well. But on top of those numbers, we've also got these percentages of, of how many people in the U S have these particular things. So I'll just run down the line real quick. 60% of consumers had a credit card, 30% have an auto loan, 25% have a mortgage, 24% have some kind of retail credit card, 11% have a personal loan, 10% have a student loan, and 5% have a HELOC. So those crazy percentages of just consumers, of people in the kind of the working age, right, have all these debts outstanding. And so it's just it's an outrageous issue that we have all these debts and we have to get to solving this problem before it gets too out of hand. And especially in your own household, taking care of these big ginormous issues, even if they're not as big and ginormous in your house. So what's the plan? How do, how do we do this? How do we, how do we get to paying off all our debts, especially these debts that we're like, Oh, I got $50,000 in student loan debt. How am I ever going to pay that off? Or how am I ever going to, pay off this car, you know, earlier? How am I going to do this or that? So here's the plan. Take all consumer debts that you have other than your mortgage and list them smallest to largest. Yep. In amount, not interest rate. Now you may think, Oh, well, that's, that's crazy. I'll just do interest rate. You, you want to pay off the, the highest interest rate first, right? No, 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 no. I want the smallest amount first. Now, why is this? So what this is going to allow you to do is it's going to allow you to build momentum. I've told you this before. I like to start small. I like to start doing things at an incremental level and building my way up. Because if I know that I can win with a little bit, I know I can win with a lot. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to start with our small debts and we're going to get some wins with the small debt. So list every individual debt just line by line. The only time that I'm going to go by interest rate is if the amounts are similar. If the amounts are similar and one's at 22% credit card and the other one is a 5% student loan, then yeah, I want to pay off the 22% credit card first. But but I'm not trying to get into the the little nuances of that. I want you to go smallest to largest. That way you're getting little wins along the way and you're building up and you're rolling upward. So then once we've listed these, what are we going to do? We're going to pay the minimum payment on all of our debts, except for the smallest one. So the minimum payment on all of our debts, then the smallest one, any extra money that you have in your budget, you're going to throw at the smallest one. Then once that smallest one is paid off, you're going to roll the money that you were putting into the smallest one into the next highest debt, or excuse me, the next lowest debt. So the one right above it in amount. And you're going to roll that payment into that one. So you're going to be making that minimum payment plus the, all the extra money that you were throwing on that smallest one onto the next one. And you see how it compounds on itself. And you're going to continue doing that all the way through. So the way in which we want to do this, we want to take all extra money that we have. So at this point, 
we have a little bit of emergency savings where we may only be investing a little bit. We may be investing nothing if, if we don't have an employer match and, and we should be finding some kind of margin in our budget. And if we're finding that margin in our budget, that margin needs to go directly toward these debts. And so that any extra money you can find, again, this is a lot like when we were talking about the emergency fund, how you may want to take on a second job. You may want to take on a side hustle so you can really get this thing going. And we want to go as hard and as fast and as intense as possible here because we don't want to stay in debt any longer than we have to. We don't want to forego investing as much as we can longer than we have to. We want to get to a place of financial strength. We don't want to stay in this place of financial weakness just because it's comfortable and I can, I can wallow here because this is what I'm comfortable with. No, we want to move to a place that is that is better for us. Now, the only way that we're going to break this smallest to largest attack is if you owe money to one entity, and that entity is the IRS, because I don't want you to have to deal with the strain of the government coming after you. I mean, they can garnish your wages. They can do a lot of things. They can take a lot of extreme measures. I want you to get them off of your back as quickly as possible. Pay your taxes, get that out of the way. Then we'll go on a smallest to largest journey together. Now, also, if you're really close to some extremely negative event like bankruptcy or foreclosure, do what you have to do. Figure, just survive, okay? It, at that point, there there's very little plan. There's a, there's a lot more just trying to tread water and and get your head above to where you can you can breathe again, to where you can actually make a plan and do something positive. So if you're you're in that place, then then just do what you do what you have to do. Be be so diligent and and just work as hard as you can. Be be as just tough as you can in in those situations. I know those have to be tough places to be. So if you are facing a foreclosure or a bankruptcy, just just fight, fight hard, and and fight your way out of that. And then we can start uh, meeting meeting some of these uh, debt issues. Now, when I bring up bankruptcy, I I don't want you to think that we can use that as a crutch. Okay, so this this is what I mean. Let's say you, you have exorbitant amounts of debt on any given thing, and you think the, the only way I'm going to get out of all of this is if I file bankruptcy, because what bankruptcy does is it will, you know, in most cases, it'll wipe the slate clean for you, but it will destroy your credit history. It will destroy uh, the, your likelihood of buying anything of value in the future. It's It's going to really put a black mark on, on your ability to do anything financially moving forward. So that is a worst case scenario situation. I do not want you trying to file bankruptcy to, to get around the system. You need to take full responsibility for getting into the debt that you've gotten into and claw and fight and tough your way out of that debt. And then once we get on the other side, gosh, it, it gets a lot, lot more fun. But like I said earlier, this is a grueling step. This is something where it may feel like, gosh, I've been paying on these debts for years and now I'm finally working my way out of them. Well, yeah, it's, it's, it's tough. It, it's, it's a tough thing to do to, to finally pay off debts and, and to finally uh, get debt free. But man, once you're there, you don't ever have to look back and you don't ever have to pay on those things again. And you actually have something that you didn't have before money. So why be debt, debt free? Why, why not have any debt anymore. Well, first of all, you'll be able to breathe. You know, you, you'll be able to not stress and worry and be anxious about the the money that you owe um, GMC Financial or, or whomever you may owe money to. It's it's not going to be a, a struggle in your life to, to pay for things that you need to pay for because you're not going to have that many things to pay for anymore. Now your paychecks can be used for your enjoyment and for your future and not for paying these people that you owe. Now that brings up a good point. Now what what you can do now that you're you're going to be debt free is is you can look forward. 
You no longer have to look backwards to the bad decisions that you made. You can start building forward and actually doing things that are going to benefit you in the long term and and benefit you in your, your financial life down the road. And you can actually look towards those things with some hope and some confidence. And you don't have to worry as much about, you know, sitting around and, and wallowing in the in the bad decisions of the past. Having no debt can make you more comfortable with following a passion that you have or, and, and following a particular way in life that you want to you want to follow it can also it can also allow you to to do big things that you've never done before if you have money to to go on a on a big trip now you can do that without anything holding you back there's nothing that that's financially telling you that that's that's the wrong thing to do and for those of you who who may be called to some position in in ministry or, or called to do mission work or something like that being out of debt can really put you in a place to where you don't feel held back from from doing those things that God's called you to do and you can go and you can do it you know unapologetically and with confidence and and um, with a lot of gusto you can go and and do it and um, and that it just frees you up being being debt free it just frees you from the chains that were holding you before couple more things that being debt free does now you can give generously if you, if you're debt free now you've got a lot of margin in your budget you have a lot of leftover money in your budget so guess what you can do you can give like you have never given before you can be more generous and and more uh, serving towards other people than you've ever been before and and that's a huge thing and that's just going to add to your joy and your gratitude um, as you move forward in your financial life and finally, now you believe in yourself. You have done something that you probably didn't believe you could do before. And once you're debt free, you, you can actually believe that you can do big things. You can believe that, that you can do things that are you know, bigger than what you may have thought. And so it adds confidence to you and, and, and you believe that, that you're able to do. And you'll take that into other areas of your life, maybe your work or, or whatever it may be. And, and that confidence will, will persist and, and you'll be able to, to realize that, that you're worth so much more than that debt was making you feel like you were worth. It makes you feel pretty worthless. But then once you feel like, hey, I can, I can do this and, and I'm, um, I have the ability to do these things, then the sky's the limit from there. Well, what if you're telling me, though, you know, being debt free, you know, Dylan, I can pay my bills. I can, I can afford the things that I have, I can make the monthly payments. Well, if that's the case, you know, you're always going to be a slave to some particular entity, whether it be a bank or whether it be a, a financial company or a credit card company or, or whatever. You're always going to owe them. You're always going to be indebted to them and you'll be burdened by that debt. Uh, as long as you decide to keep it. And so not becoming debt free is just going to keep you in that place where um, the, that company is, is your master. That company is, is really, really bearing down on you uh, for the foreseeable future. Additionally, when you're not debt free, then your ability to give is diminished. Your ability to make impacts on other people's lives is, is greatly diminished because you're always shackled by this this debt that's holding you down additionally you can't enjoy your money like you you would like because your income is having to to go to this particular company that that you're owing money to so anytime that you're having to allocate your money toward debt that's that's ways that you can't use your money um, that may be more productive or, or more um, value producing to you one of those big ways is you won't feel the full brunt of what you're able to do with your saving and investing. You're not going to be able to save and invest as much as you would if you were debt free. So when, once you're debt free, you can save and invest to your to your fullest potential and be able to to build wealth to a level maybe you thought you, you never thought possible. Um, but anything that you are living above your means and taking out debt to do so, all that's doing is it's stealing from your future. Anything that you're going in debt for now is stealing from your future because your future is not going to look as bright as it would otherwise. So you may also be saying, 
well, Dylan, what about what about my house? Like, why why did we why did we keep that out of the equation here? Well, the house is going to be an asset that is likely going to go up in value over time. It's not depreciating quickly, so that's that's first off. Second of all, it's probably at a very low interest rate, even though I, I don't really take that into account. Um, but at, at the same time, it, it's it's making a big assumption that you know you're in that place where you can start paying extra on the house, and and that's that's going to take a little more time than just paying off these consumer debts. And we want to get you to that investing place before we get you to paying off the house. And if you don't already own a home, now, now is not the time. It, until you're out of consumer debt and you have an, a, a fully funded emergency fund, which we haven't gotten to yet, then you don't need to be buying a house. Uh, and you may be saying, oh, well, Dylan, that's, you know, that's a, an asset that, that I can you know, start putting equity into, and, and it's such a good thing. Well, no, it, not necessarily. If if you have all these debts that are weighing you down, and I know some people, are, I'm going to get some pushback on this, and and that's fine. I believe what you want, but I'm just telling you the the impact that debt's going to have on you. It's going to keep you from being a, in a strong financial financial position when you go to buy a house. Just think about all the expenses that a house can come with, all the repairs that may need to be done to a house, all the things that you couldn't imagine that are going to come with owning a home uh, when you're not prepared to do so. So until you're out of consumer debt, unless you already own, if you already own a home, I'm not asking you to sell your home. I'm just saying, if you aren't in that place yet, don't try to go there out of order. But we do want your home paid off. That That's something that's coming down the road. We want your home paid off because that's that, that's an asset. That's, that's something that, that's going to add to your net worth and it's just going to make your ability to give and save and spend even even greater it's going to make it's just going to make your whole financial life go into overdrive and you know you may also be saying well well Dylan what what about you know my credit score like if i pay off all my debts then aren't they going to get rid of my credit score isn't my credit score going to go down well let me tell you this your credit score is not the end all be all okay your credit score is not the end of the world. Guess what? If you got cash to pay for stuff, you don't need a credit score. Now, yes, you do need a credit score to get a get a mortgage. You need one to finance a car, but I'd, I'd say never finance cars, and, and we'll talk about that more later. And you can still maintain a, a credit score via the responsible use AKA not holding a balance on a credit card. Now we'll talk about credit cards later and I don't want you guys to think, oh, well, Dylan's all about credit cards. No, I'm not all about credit cards, but I I believe that if I can responsibly use them in order to just maintain a credit score so I can purchase a house, then that's that's an effective thing to do. But you also have to know yourself. You have to know your habits. If you are out of control, you need to get rid of everything, cut them up, get rid of credit cards, get rid of everything and don't look back, be debt free, because there are ways that you can get a mortgage without uh, a credit score. And I, I just I just don't want you to be in a place where you're burdened by debt anymore. And if you need to talk to somebody about this, you need to dig in deeper, then get with me, www.mnowithdylan.com slash work with Dylan. Okay. And you can set up a, a financial coaching consultation and and then we can we can get into sessions with each other and really dig into these things and, and why these these things are true and, and why they're going to do best for you in your long-term financial success. I know that some of these things aren't completely math-based, like doing the, the debts by the amount and not by the interest rate. I know that's not, and I'm, I'm a math nerd, right? But what I understand is that m- money and personal finance is behavioral. It is not a math equation because if it were just a math equation, it's obvious what you need to do, right? And everybody would just do it. Boom, boom, boom. But people don't make the right decisions. If if we were doing math, we wouldn't have credit cards. If we were doing math, we wouldn't have uh, other high interest debts that like payday loans. Like uh, those things don't make sense if we're doing math. So this is a behavior based discipline, right? And so we need to create good habits, good behaviors, and these are the ways to do that. So financial freedom, 
can't be done without getting getting out of debt. You have to get out of debt. Um, this is just such a pivotal point in the financial action plan. To move forward, this is painful. This is a tough step to be in, but you have to drive through. You have to con continue pushing, continue driving through to where you get to the other side and you, you get to the point where where you're free of, of the bondage of debt and free from the, the chains that, that debt has put on you. And so just push through, push through here, do everything you can, work hard, work fast. We don't want to wallow in our debt. We want to get through it as quick as possible. You will not regret taking this step and getting out of debt. You'll have more money than you ever thought that you had because now you actually don't have to spend it on things that you owe money to. Now you actually can just put it in your bank account at the, at the end of the month or you can put it in savings or your emergency fund or investments or, or whatever it may be. You'll actually have money. Well, guys, thanks for another great week of uh, the show. I, I've, I've really enjoyed putting out these episodes and walking through the financial action plan. We're going to pick up Monday with step number five. And I'll just kind of leave a cliffhanger here. Not really going to tell you much about what it's about, but cliffhanger to, to step number five on, on Monday. And uh, that'll be episode 11 of this show. Look out tomorrow uh, for a weekly rewind. That'll come out at 6 a.m. Central Time. Uh, once again, it's just really helpful to us if you'll just go and subscribe to the channel, like the video, um, leave me some comments, leave me some feedback. Follow me on social media at MNO with Dylan. We can have some, some dialogue there. Um, also go to the, the website, like I said, www.mnowithdylan.com, and that can be a really useful resource for you as well. So uh, I really appreciate everybody, everybody tuning in. Everybody have a great weekend. Uh, this is Money's No Object. I'm Dylan Howell. God bless.